I wasn't entirely sure how to make this video initially because everyone already knows the story of Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, the Empire of Japan launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, thus bringing the US into World War II when initially we had been neutral. Many battleships in the US Pacific Fleet were destroyed, and luckily a lot of the aircraft carriers were away, so we got to save those for later on in the war, which would be very key, but it is a very fateful day for many who are still trapped in that harbor. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Arizona Memorial, and it kind of sets the tone for the whole of the museum and the whole of the exhibit at this particular battlefield. If you can even call it a battlefield, because most of it is water. It's on or below the water. It's a very unique kind of experience. But the first thing I want to talk about is the Arizona Memorial, because over a thousand men are still entombed in there. And it's a very solemn experience to go see and to see the little oil dribbles coming out of it still to this day. And just the way it, it lies there. It's a symbol of the low point of the war, the beginning, how we were brought into the war, the epic punch to the mouth that we took before joining. And there's a sense of respect that you have to have when you are there. The people who built the memorial had shown so much respect to the ship because one little tidbit I want to add before I go on is the Arizona is the only ship that was not raised after the attack. It's the only one that was left exactly where it was. The other battleships on Battleship Row that were damaged or sunk that day were raised and returned to duty or scrapped and used to build newer ships, which I'll get a little bit more into later in the video. But the people who built the memorial around the Arizona, the memorial actually doesn't even touch the ship. There's nothing about it that touches anything. It is left entirely alone to be a place for those men who died in such a horrible way to rest in peace. And it's, I, I don't wanna say it's an incredible because it's, it's really not. It's just, it's more of a, jaw-dropping experience it's something you kind of have to go and feel for yourself and when you you walk through the memorial you know there's the names down at the end which i didn't capture any footage of because i just have a thing about filming names i think they should be left for people to see in person You've probably seen the names in film anyway but regardless the the ship the way pieces of it stick out of the water the oil dribbles that come out of it still to this day it's just such a solemn experience that you're standing above this tomb and you just, you have these feelings about everything that happened that day. You're literally standing above a piece of history that, you know, the smoke clouds from the Arizona could be seen all over the island of Oahu. It, it was hit in like the worst possible place. The magazine exploded, ripping the ship apart. Many of the men who are still down there didn't even know what happened when they did die. It just kind of happened before they could even realize what was going on and it's just such a solemn experience and then right behind her is the uss missouri the mighty mo it's a long time serving ship in the u.s navy now retired and is a museum ship but this ship is the symbol of the high point the war ended on the symbol of american might in industry and how we came together to win the war. It is a massive ship and it's a beautiful ship as well. When you go on there, you will see a lot of the newer technology that it was fitted with towards the later end of its life around the end of the Cold War. Now there actually is a funny story about that, but I'll tell that a little later. So the Missouri was commissioned around 1944 and was entered into service. Of course, it is the ship that the Japanese High Command signed the surrender documents on at the end of the war in Tokyo Bay. So there is a nice little memorial to that as well as the documents that were signed. And alongside that, there are other spots throughout the ship where you can see a lot of the technology of old as well as the new. You can see where it has evolved. There's even a little tribute to other ships in US Navy history, also named Missouri, including one from around the Civil War and another one that was a part of Teddy Roosevelt's Great White Fleet. And it's just, it's a really cool ship because you can really see the evolution of naval technology from World War II all the way up until the end of the Cold War. Like I said, the Missouri served a really long time. It was 
from essentially the end of World War II until 1955 that it was initially commissioned and then it was recommissioned again in 1986 as a part of Reagan's expansion of the Navy and they tried to fit it with modern guided missile tech. The problem was every time the Missouri fired her main guns, she would knock out the actual guided missile technology because the guns were so powerful. So they ended up retiring her because they really didn't have a use for one of those old timey dreadnought battleships with the big guns when you can fire a missile from hundreds of miles away. And speaking of those guns, they are very impressive. Very impressive. There's three turrets with three guns apiece and they are I believe 14 inch guns that is massive definitely do a lot of damage but again it's a beautiful ship I highly recommend checking out if you do go um, it, it's well worth the time and it's just a really cool experience to connect you with the past in a more visual sense as opposed to the Arizona where it's more of you're connected with that event you can see the result of that event and why it was so devastating for us. Now the last thing I want to talk about is Ford Island's airfield and that of course is now a museum. There's two separate hangars that you can check out. One of them is much more dedicated to World War II and the actual attack on Pearl Harbor itself. So you'll see a lot more planes that have to do with the Pacific Theater and everything like that. You'll see things like the B-25, SBD Dauntless, the Hellcat, there's even a Flying Tiger P-40 in there. A crashed A6M-0 actually has a really neat story behind it, but I'll leave you guys to research that on your own. A lot of, lot of really cool aircraft in there. And then of course you can go to the other hangar and it has kind of an evolution of aerial technology in it and a lot of the different planes from different eras of US aviation as well as other nations and their aviation. You can see things like the subsonic jets of the 1950s like the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre and then there's like the F-4 Phantoms of the Vietnam War and a lot of really cool jets like F-15s and F-14s like the F-14 is iconic because of Top Gun. There's actually in the back is something really really cool and it's a crashed B-17 that you can see and you can see like the props are all bent up and there's a ton of damage to it and it's really really cool i'm hoping that they're trying to restore it or at least something like that where they can preserve it and then across from it i don't know if i have footage of this as i'm recording this is an sbd dauntless as well from the war that's in pretty rough condition it's really cool stuff and i highly recommend checking that out as well now i will say the gift shop there is a bit of a top gun glory hole I think I heard Danger Zone play like 20 times when I was in there, so I don't know what that has to do with Pearl Harbor or World War II, but I mean, aviation. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I know this is something really different, but I did promise it that I would make something like this while I was gone, so I tried my best to do so. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video, which will be one of my more usual ones.